Now that we know how to represent deep neural networks, let us discuss their applications to classification problems. The simplest use case of classification is linear binary classification. In this situation, the decision boundary separating the two different classes is linear. The prediction formula, in this case, is made of a linear combination of the input features and a step activation function. In binary classification, artificial neural networks do not require a linear embedding process. The input features, which belongs to the raw data, are enough to account for the formula of the decision boundary. This basic neural network is known as a perceptron model. The perceptron model is an ideal solution for binary classification problems with linear decision boundaries. It represents the simplest form of a deep neural network. Historically, the perceptron was one of the earliest artificial neural networks that were built for the purpose of conducting research in the field of artificial intelligence. Graphically, the perceptron can be represented as the following. A basic linear combination of the weighted input features that go through a step activation function. The y-hat formula will then spit values that are either 0 or 1. The case of nonlinear classification problems, multi-class or binary, is where deep neural networks really shine. As a reminder, the formula of the hypothesis in deep neural networks is given as an activation function of some sort, wrapping a linear combination of weighted terms that are no longer the raw input features. The x terms are, however, their own hypothesis, each with an activation function and a linear combination of weighted terms. At this stage, we can say that deep neural networks are in fact a combination of multiple perceptrons. Let us consider the case of a nonlinear binary classification dataset. The slightly curved decision boundary can be obtained by combining multiple variations of linear classification on the same dataset. Then, by applying different weights to these linear decision boundaries, we can minimize or maximize the contribution of some of these boundaries compared to others. This way, we can get different varieties of nonlinear decision boundaries. We can now visualize this fact in terms of combined perceptrons. Each linear decision boundary can be represented with a perceptron model. Let us suppose, for the sake of demonstration, that we only consider two linear hypotheses. Every perceptron will have specific values of the weights and will give a probability by summing the x1, x2 terms and applying the activation function. Then, both outcomes will be combined into a single new perceptron with new weights and its activation function. This outcome can now account for a nonlinear decision boundary. The case of multi class classification problems puts the concept of combined perceptrons on steroids. In this case, we need to fabricate a hypothesis which accounts for the series of probabilities stemming from all different classes in our dataset. As before, and for the sake of clarity, we combine the linear summation and the activation function into a single notation. Let us consider a hypothesis made of two weighted terms. We apply a four steps linear embedding process to this hypothesis. At each step, any term is made of a linear combination of the four previous terms plus an activation function. As previously, we annotate both the linear summation and the activation function with purple circles. We will adopt a similar labeling convention as in the literature. 
Here, x0 represents the term related to the bias. Then, we label x1, x2, and x3 as the remaining nodes in each step. The superscript 1 refers to the so-called first layer of the neural network. From the y-hat prediction point of view, this first layer is actually the last step in the linear embedding process. Then, we move to the second layer, annotated with superscript 2 for each of its x0 to x3 hypotheses. The second layer corresponds to the third step in the linear embedding process. The same logic applies to the third layer, aka step 2 in the linear embedding process. Finally, the fourth layer, which has only two linear hypotheses, namely x0 and x1, corresponds to the first step in the linear embedding process. Each term from the second layer is a linear combination of weighted terms from the first layer. In this case, the weights are labeled with a superscript 1 to refer to the first layer of the network. The two numbers in the subscript of each weight refer to the subscripts in the left and right nodes respectively. For example, the weight connecting the x20 node to the x13 node is labeled as W130. Same goes for the third layer. Each node is a linear combination of every node from the second layer plus an activation function. Again, every node in the fourth layer is a linear combination of weighted nodes from the previous layer with an activation function. The y-hat prediction is obtained by a weighted linear combination of the nodes from the fourth layer and an activation function. As we can see, this deep neural network is indeed a series of combined perceptrons. Each node can be seen as a single perceptron of the nodes from the previous layer. This is why deep neural networks are often referred to as multilayer perceptrons. At this stage, we can present important naming conventions when it comes to deep neural networks. The first and last layers of a deep neural network are called the input layer and the output layer, respectively. The input layer is made of the raw input features of our dataset. The output layer, on the other hand, is made of the final nodes that go into the final prediction or hypothesis of the deep neural network. All the layers that lay between the input and output layers are known as the hidden layers. The deep layers are usually where the magic of deep learning happens. More on that on the next videos. The depth of a deep neural network refers to the sum of all layers in the network. It is why deep neural networks are referred to as deep. In this case, the depth of this network is equal to 4. Finally, such a deep neural network is known as fully connected network. This is in contrast to other types of deep neural networks, such as convolutional neural networks or recurrent neural networks, which we will cover in future videos.